Thank you so much for inviting me, Andreas, and on Sam and Andreas, <laughs> uh, and uh, congratulations on a marvelous show. It's a pleasure to be part of that uh, program, and 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 also such a pleasure to be with uh, Senya here, getting a preview of this amazing book. I uh, can't wait for that. Um, oh, spoke. I'm sorry. Um, this is not meant to be a secret. Okay. <laughs> and then. Um, so, so uh, uh, what you're looking at is a, a video that the White House produced um, during the 2018 summit. Donald Trump, in the summer of 2018, Donald Trump offered Kim Jong-un a movie trailer style projection of North Korea after the floodgates had been opened to the global marketplace. And while the global press found the um, Hollywood stylings completely inexplicable, Trump was really only offering the common currency of contemporary global real estate and trade, this is the main trope, um, just another of hundreds of um, similar examples produced in the render farms of real estate and infrastructure kingdoms all over the world. With all the, the repetition and monotony of porn, these three minute cliches of global urbanism usually well, almost always begin in outer space as a new era is dawning. Um, Typically, in a city below, there's a Star Wars style fly through that threads through a field of uh, skyscrapers sprouting out of the ground uh, before swinging over industrial areas and container ports and resorts. The voiceover announces all the neoliberal mantras of free trade uh, that the free zone is uh, organizing no taxes, cheap labor streamlined customs, deregulation of labor and environmental law. What a feeling the theme from Flashdance plays as one video advertises its logistics back of house or a Yanni-like soundtrack accompanies magnificent claims of world city urbanity that are enjoyed by doughy cartoon humans rhythmically waddling along boulevards or plowing forward stone-faced in pleasure boats, or a population of villas pops into place. <laughs> the flyover surveys a field of identical candy-colored vill villas, and in the dramatic finale to the swelling theme from Titanic, there's confetti and glowing sunsets and bursting hearts preceding a pan back out into the stratosphere past fireworks and orbiting satellites. The DPRK has even created its own ecstatic videos that um, map existing or projected economic zones for industry or tourism in the East Coast or on the borders with Russia and China. And these are even stranger, uh, shifting frantically through up-tempo music themes of harps and organ polkas and patriotic marches and lullabies and bongo interludes. So the free zone, um, a kind of sister cousin of the, of the secret zones that Shenya was talking about, um, it's legalized its exemption from law, privileging the freedom of corporations and offshore finance uh, m more complicated in some ways than a, than a state of exception, much more treacherous in the sense that it's multiple laws and multiple nations in overlapping uh, exemptions, and sweetened with incentives and bathed in elaborate promotional fantasies. This is a massive global infrastructure installation of corporate capital and a major engine of inequality, labor abuse, and environmental brinksmanship. But Trump and Kim or The Zone are way ahead of everyone. They know that contemporary urbanism seems to be largely driven by two cultural addictions. Forget about ideology. You know, there are revenue streams and mediagenic fantasies. And this global infrastructure space that's perfectly streamlined the global movements of billions of products and tens of millions of tourists and cheap laborers 
at a time when over 70 million people in the world are displaced, somehow there's no way, no ingenuity possible, no way to move several million people away from atrocities like those in Syria or facilitate other movements related to climate or labor. The nation state has a dumb on-off button to grant or deny citizenship or asylum, and the extra state layers of governance like the NGocracy offers their uh, best idea, storage in a refugee camp, a form of detention lasting on average 17 years. I mean, the, 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 secret, the secret city, the zone, and the, the camp are strange carceral cousins of each other. Um, and the spatial products and repeatable formulas uh, for, for everything from buildings to entire free zone cities are also rapidly generating a new layer of the Earth's crust. Most are locating in an exploding urban periphery, uh, the growth of land increasing more than the growth of the, of the urban population. So more and more people living in cities, but in peripheral areas that are increasingly less dense and staggering in size. You know this, this prediction uh, that in 2050 there will be you know, over 3 million square kilometers of a less dense urban periphery, like the size of the country of India. All of this development con continues to contribute to the global warming that's increasingly self-evident and measurable, accelerating like a speeding freight train. But governments um, all around the world defy global compacts attempting to alleviate the situation. Um, all of these spaces and the powers that preside over them have often become what we might call political superbugs. Surviving against all odds generate unchecked concentrations of power, extremes of inequality, and climate cataclysms. And now, you know, bored with just measuring and describing the superbug and, and maybe moving beyond rhetorical critiques to be consumed with in some of our venues of cultural production, our next Biennale or whatever. Maybe all of us as spatial practitioners who are as perplexed as any who have explored these conditions, maybe we nevertheless offer to our allied disciplines some forms with which to actually manipulate the physical world. And taking stock of, of what we have to unwind the power of superbugs, and I'm just now saying the simplest and most obvious thing. It's a, you know, it's a culture that's good at pointing to things and calling their name, but not so good at describing relationships between things or the repertoires that things enact. Our modern Enlightenment mind has replaced God with ideologies that privilege declarations and right answers, universals and elementary particles. It's captivated with circular logics and modernist scripts about freedom and newness. This mind that looks for the one and only is then so often organized like a closed loop. And since that loop can't abide contradiction, it lashes out with a binary fight when it's challenged, favoring succession rather than coexistence. You know, the new right answer must kill the old right answer. It's as if in some fatal error, we are creatures who've trained our mind to want to be right. You know, we will all go to bed tonight thinking about the ways in which we were right all along. And, and, and strangely, this idea about, you know, being right is, is the same, the same as the sort of secrecy, this deep-seated human emotion that suddenly, strangely scales all the way up to these gigantic territories. So oscillating between loops and binaries, an unnecessarily violent culture having eliminated the very information it needs is often banging away with the same blunt, inadequate tools. So a bully is elected, a migration of refugees swells in number, shorelines flood due to global warming, and what do we have? If, if economic and military engagement or new technologies don't provide the solution, um, if the consensus surrounding laws and standards and master plans provide no relief, it's as if the smartest people in the world are standing with hand to brow. And the binaries of war and chest-beating sovereignty of nations remain in place. 
Homo economicus is allowed to upstage and hold forth, and the whole thing should should build to an apocalyptic revolution or burnout. These are the hackneyed plots of our humanities. And dissent, you know, also adopting a, a binary of in, enemies and innocents. Um, and since the world's big bullies and bulletproof forms of power, those superbugs, thrive on this oscillation between loop and binary, it's as if there's nothing to counter them, only more ways of fighting and being right and providing the rancor that nourishes their innocence, their violence. So how do you drop through a trap door to engage the flip side of these logics? And that, you know, in our modern way, you know, this would be the moment where you unleash your new and radical proposal. But, but that would be sad. Um, on this flip side, nothing is new and nothing is right. And there's only a chance to maybe rehearse a very ordinary habit of mind that's eclipsed. A blind spot that's right in front of you or a terra incognita where you've already been. And I think it's a, a faculty that designers have in abundance. I know there are many designers here. Um, so on this flip side, maybe it's easier to see at a different focal length beyond those declared ideologies um, is, is a matrix or medium of activities and latent potentials, the undeclared dispositions that are maybe something like culture's muscle memory. Um, it's a medium that in this usage is clear of communication technology, media, and returning to its root medius, meaning middle or milieu. And maybe just as this medium thinking, you know, kind of looking with half-closed eyes and inverting the focus on object to middle, um, maybe it can offer some alternative approaches to intractable problems, some way of outwitting some of the most cunning superbugs. I think designers are good at assessing and manipulating medium. They have something like a canine mind where your dog, you know, hears you say the words good girl and understands the lexical expression but would never rely on that is, is looking at a thousand other affective cues, how close you are to the door or the dog bowl and whether you have a leash in your hand or even your temperament. And so in that kind of, kind of turning the sound down on declarations, maybe it's easier to detect the difference between what an organization is saying and what it's doing and how organizations decouple their messages and ideologies from their real activities and their underlying potentials. Even considering only the most obvious ones, um, you know, on one side of the screen in the, in the kinds of uh, territories I look at and m massive global infrastructures, the stories about these gigantic socio-technical organizations, whether they're railroads or networks of free zones or hydroelectric networks or blockchains, they, they may be about decentralization and freedom. They're almost always about that. But the real, what's really happening on the ground is that the organization is often concentrating power and authority with a universal ambition. Or the smart city that's so often a label in these zones maintains the shine of the new even when it's centralizing information, violating privacy creating a network that's actually prude, crude and, and primitive in disposition. Or a social media network purports to be information rich, but filters all that information through a dumb binary of likes and dislikes that makes it information poor. Or the, this global network of Dubai-style zone cities is not facilitating its storied free trade, but obviously manipulated trade. Or centralizing power espouses a populist message, or both left and right wing ideologies can result in concentrations of authoritarian power. So it's, it's not somehow you know that it's not the ideology that's declared, but some other potentials or latent uh, dispositions that are undeclared that seem to be determining outcomes. So maybe it, with, that, with that sort of view of middle, is it easier to see that superbugs 
have a special power for manipulating ideologies to get to their real target, which are these dispositions. They want to keep everyone sort of oscillating between loops and binaries where there will be no in innovation, where they can kind of cocoon and thrive like a confidence man. They're masters of, of lies uh, and distractions that even seem to turn lexical expressions into force fields, into a kind of, you know, they, they tell one lie. They know that telling one lie is a bad idea because it, it's easy to reconcile, but telling many lies creates a kind of Teflon on which rationality starts to slip and slide. They become pure medium, a kind of activity divorced from, from content. Or consider the uh, where it gets very tricky. Uh, consider you know Russian interference in the 2016 election in the U.S. It brilliantly used an ideological tool with the intent to shape not ideology but disposition. So there were you know there were many um, you know, kind of fake posts fomenting racism, so that the the ideological activist had no choice but to march in the streets and condemn this hate. But the parallel effect of the trick was to sow division, uh, animate groups to agitate against each other, and therefore exacerbate a binary that helped deliver Donald Trump. So an, an ideological activist, by strangely, confoundingly, by focusing on consistent declarations of principles, eventually facilitated the, ideologies and political positions that it opposed. So it seems wildly dangerous to rely only on ideology when undeclared activity or disposition could facilitate untouchable accumulations of power and environmental forms of violence. So this this deceptively simple faculty that I, I do think designers have remains profoundly under-rehearsed. Um, and on this flip side, though, there is a, a redoubled territory of design activism and extra political and aesthetic capacities where some expectations are maybe inverted on this, on the other side of that trapdoor. I mean, one inversion in, in it would say, you know, that being right is a really bad idea. It's too weak. It doesn't work against superbugs. And maybe culture's spectacular failures together with underexploited powers of this medium inspire another way to register the design imagination. Um, and the form making in another uh, key or part of speech where the object of design isn't to make objects and master plans, but to um, design the relationships between those things. We're very good at making shapes and outlines, but maybe this is more, less like making a thing and more like having your hands on the faders and toggles of information, like designing interdependencies and chemistries and chain reactions. So maybe it would be something like playing pool where where knowing one fixed sequence doesn't do you any good, but being able to see a branching set of networks allows you to add more information to the table. So you're making something that shouldn't always work or that's indeterminate to be practical. In another inversion, maybe this work is not trying to eliminate problems, but multiply them, use them to leaven and catalyze each other. Something like Perando's paradox, which is a, uh, that counterintuitive game theory that says if you play two losing, if you alternate between lo losing games, they somehow create a kind of ratcheting effect, which can generate wins. So maybe it's not the existence or even the content of the problem, but the interplay between them that's important. That would be, I mean, failure is limitless, a constantly replenished sort of wilderness for these design ecologies. And yet in another inversion, maybe it's more, more important than the newness or that kind of modern succession of technologies is the relationship between them, between technologies. So rejecting the necessity of a digital presence of sensors and devices that make the stiff world dance, this, design would treat um, heavy, lumpy, physical space as an information system, as Bates and said, a man, a tree, and an ax as an information system. 
So it would be the mixtures of, of heavy, spatial, and digital, which would be most information rich. And maybe also worth noting that in this kind of medium, latent violence can be latent. Um, there needn't be a drawn sword or a gunshot. Um, here in the Rana Plaza free zone, there was a collapse. Um, there was an event to mark the violence, but in countless factories, in industrial parks that don't happen to buckle under the weight of their own denial, there's no event. Um, there's only latent temperament. There's only constant aggressions, imbalanced power dynamics. Turn, turn the camera from there just to see. It's so like the, the violence of, the, of the, just the composition of that nearby building. Or, or in Bangladesh, where many, many people were, are, are fleeing uh, the violence of an extremely shallow coastal plain where the rising tide due to global warming sends water rushing in. Uh, and that's displaced many people who are locating in cities and factories like the Dhaka export processing zone was the site of the Rana Plaza collapse. So I mean, we, we were talking, uh, Senya and I were talking about this yesterday, the, you know, the minute one begins to talk about what, what one might do is to enter a territory of failure and embarrassment. But, um, think of a place like Nairobi where the same zone videos are appearing. And it's now flush with broadband capacities, a big share of the world's cell phone users, uh, as you know, most of which are now in developing countries. And while that potentially changes everything, they're getting the same cocktail of master plans and standards, economics, uh, econometrics from global consultancies like Deloitte and McKinsey and so on, the same blunt instruments. Um, but in Nairobi, maybe you could use the zone's ambition to be a city as the germ of its own reversal. Some places like Dubai, you know, made their made access to their resources uh, like oil and gas contingent on an offset of something investment they needed, fish farming, desalination, something like that. So a city like Nairobi might make a better bargain with their assets, like access to billions of cell phone users, by, by using foreign investment not to make newly minted ex-urban zone enclaves, but to leverage benefits for the city itself. So, um, in an interplay that would link investment here in the kind of ex-urban blue to some shared resources. Um, and, it, and those shared resources could be anything, but this one imagines that, that it's transit, that is this kind of red cartoon shape. Um, uh, transit that would benefit the city, but also deliver workers to uh, businesses in many of these zones. The infrastructure stops right at the edge and people are walking you know, for hours even to get to them to work. So, but would this sort of urban rewiring potentially um, more directly return financial benefits to the domestic economy, and maybe more importantly, reduce the violence to workers by returning them to the protections and, and regulations of law? Or here's another interplay. While roads are typically regarded as conduits of progress and opportunity in rural or wilderness areas, um, uh, they can erase the information imminent in cities and villages and landscapes. Um, but digital and spatial information platforms can make each other uh, either more information poor or more information rich. So again, trying to exercise a, an organ of interplay, this protocol considers an interplay between broadband roads and forest or jungle. So it's wondering if it might be more productive to dial down roads, which are the gray lines, while you're dialing up broadband uh, and preserving a green information system that attracts more global resources that happen to be broadband hungry. All to say that changing a road, as well as changing, um, that changing a road can hack into a telecommunications network. I 
people show one more. I want, I, it's necessary to show many interplays to talk about what, what would an interplay be, but um, this is a, another kind of platform or protocol that was in a kind of imagined experiment for facilitating migration through an exchange of needs, through an exchange of the kinds of failures of which there are uh, endless amounts, with no haves and have nots, uh, only a matchmaking of needs and failures, time and opportunity for training that ex um, expand opportunities for temporary movement and return. It was a platform that was speaking for those who, who might say, uh, I don't want your citizenship or your victimhood or your structured racism or your bad jobs. I don't want to stay in your country, um, sort of so to leave the right wing to throw itself against an open door. And with looking for another kind of cosmopolitan mobility that was based on shorter strings of journeys uh, in exchange for global credentials, matchmaking needs for um, of migrating populations to a multitude of other needs around the world. Again, no haves and have nots. Um, and not a sunny one world sharing app, but a kind of heavy information system. Um, uh, you know, nothing works. Uh, and to worry that things will go wrong is to miss the point. Things will go wrong. You can only achieve varying degrees of relief. Um, and then finally, just thinking back to the superbug skills of discrepancy, while bored with the safety of the purely rhetorical, maybe the design that has any hope of affecting change manipulates the organization as well as the instrumental narrative that attends it with something that's sneakier or politically agile, something that's contagious, something that has an emotional message something vulnerable, something that has a surprising cultural bounce because of its creepiness or its cuteness or its violence, a stealthier form of activism that mixes spatial change with the gifts and pandas and rumors and meaningless distractions and other totemic fictions that seem to be so effective in culture. So I, I mean, I guess I'm putting it to you if there are some ways to work with the things we are so good at, to get on with it, to work around the modern mind. Um, we're here on this flip side, right answers are mistakes and obligations are more empowering than freedom and histories follow latent aggressions as well as gunshots. Messy is smarter than new. You deliberately address problems with, shouldn't, with things that shouldn't always work and attempt to get some kind of uh, leverage against intractable politics with a set of snaking, maybe a snaking chain of moves. And maybe like a pool player, you wouldn't call your shots, but um, keep them guessing. And it would be like being too smart to be right. Thank you. <laughs>